four, three, two. We are live with Lunch Break Live. Chef Susan Pratt, take it away. Hello, Paige, and hello, viewers at home. I am going to make for you today a recipe that you are going to want to memorize because using simple, wholesome ingredients, mung beans, and some seasonings, we are going to make a vegan egg. And it acts just like a chicken egg. I kid you not, you're gonna walk, you're gonna see right here. And even if you sometimes eat eggs, you are still gonna love this recipe because it's high in protein. These mung beans are cheap. They're so cheap. As like, like my family would say, they're, they're cheap like borscht. Um, <laughs> they, they cost like pennies. Um, and they've got like calcium, protein. I believe it's like 26 grams of protein per 100 grams. So that's a lot. And with this vegan egg, I'm going to show you how to make a delicious omelet with some sauteed mushrooms and some gooey cheese inside. So let's get started. So it's a really easy to make recipe. That's why you're going to want to memorize it. So here I just have a blender. And yes, you're going to see a blender dance. Don't worry. Stay tuned. Um, and here we're going to put, so this is one cup of soaked mung beans. So you're gonna to wanna to soak half a cup of dried mung beans and it's going to you know, swell and take the water and it's gonna become a cup. And this also helps it um, to be easier to, to digest. So here we go into my blender. Ooh, I got a few jumping out, that's okay. All right, and then we're gonna do, this is one cup of plant milk. You can use any type of plant milk you like. I just personally like oat milk. I feel like it has a lower footprint and I like its creaminess, but you do you. And then, so we're just going to season this. It's kind of like a bean pancake, if you will, that we're making, but it's better. It has that eggy kind of texture. So um, we all know and love nutritional yeast. If you don't already know it, it's sort of a, it's like a flaky um, kind of yeast. I wish it was had a nicer name, but um, it has a really beautiful cheesy flavor to whatever you're using it for. And it's perfect in this little egg mix we're making. And we're going to add two tablespoons of oil. This is just going to give it that sort of luscious mouthfeel that eggs have. Um, you could do this oil free too and make it super, super duper healthy. Um, yeah. And then we're going to season it. So a quarter cup of garlic powder, cup, cup, teaspoon, not a cup. Oh my gosh, that would be atrocious. No, teaspoon, these are all a quarter teaspoons. Quarter teaspoon of onion powder. You could do flakes too if you want, no problem. And paprika, it's just gonna give it that a bit, um, a bit of smokiness and a little bit of color too. But for the most color, we're gonna add a quarter teaspoon of um, turmeric. And don't confuse it with curry powder. Curry powder has some turmeric in it, but it also has other flavors that we don't want in the egg. I mean, unless you like a curried egg, then throw it in, but we're just looking for plain turmeric here. And it's going to add um, that bright yellowness of a chicken egg. And half a teaspoon of plain salt. One teaspoon of baking powder. It's just gonna help it get fluffy, light and fluffy. And here is the secret. Are you ready? <laughs> to the eggy smell and taste. And I mean, if you're a person that doesn't like eggs, then skip this. Um, but this is the secret. So it's called, if you can see it, it's Himalayan black salt. But as you can see, it's actually pink. It's not black. And I affectionately refer to this as my farty salt because it has a very sulfuric scent and flavor. Um, it's not bad. It's just kind of, you know, <laughs> I don't know how else to say it <laughs> without uh, being rude. Yeah. So. Yes. It yeah. adds that sulfuric flavoring. Yes. Before. It's amazing. It's really kind of like a, a vegan secret that we're letting out. It's so amazing that... 
um, is divine. And I just want to acknowledge everybody that we are in lunch break live. We are with Chef Susan Fratt, who is a businesswoman, an incredible chef and mom, bringing us this delicious vegan egg homemade recipe. Talk about lowering your carbon footprint, making it homemade. All right, take it back to you. Yeah, Paige, that's a great point. Lowering your carbon footprint. So, you know, there's pre-made egg um, egg mixes on the market. They're great, but you know, this saves a trip to the grocery store, packaging. Um, it's really low calorie. Um, a serving of this is something like 60 to 90 calories. So really good for you too. So this is like an all round, you know, good for your body, good for the earth dish. So here we're going to add the salt. Okay. We're going to going to add an eighth of a teaspoon, just a tiny little bit. So a little bit goes a long way. Okay. And again, you're free to leave it out if you, if you want to. And then we're just going to blend this up. That's it. Like how easy is that? But, but actually before I blend it, Ooh. I'm going to put our mushrooms on. So they start cooking. Okay. We're going to switch our view a little bit. So you can hopefully see my pan. Oh, yeah. we can see there it. we go. Yes. And so I've got my plant, my, <laughs> you can't see me high. Um, I've got my pans preheated. So I say always make your pans wait for you. Don't wait for your pans to heat up. So these are already been on um, low and I'm just going to spray it with a tiny, tiny bit of olive oil. You don't need oil so much if you, if you want to leave it out. I just find it makes the mushrooms a little bit more golden. And I'm going to teach you my secret to making a perfect mushroom. I found this out actually when I forgot I was cooking mushrooms. <laughs> And I left them on for a really long time and I flipped them over and they were perfect. So the secret is don't flip them for a very, very long time. It's going to, it's going to seem like you're going to want to flip it. Don't flip it. You'll see, you'll see how long I'm going to leave these. Oh, and be what a great idea. So you keep them on the low for this length of time. Yeah. I do. And so they're in a they're in a they're in a hot pan. Yeah. And I keep them on low. I might turn it up a little bit now that they're in. And you'll see, we'll leave them for a really long time. And what it's gonna do is it's the heat is gonna bring the moisture out of the mushrooms, and then it's gonna caramel beautifully caramelize the bottom. And we don't salt it. That's another important thing until the caramelization happens. Because if we salt it, the water's gonna come up even more so, and it's gonna steam the mushrooms. That's why if you ever get like soggy mushrooms, that's why. Because if you salt them before, or flip them too early, or crowd the pan too much, that will also make it steam. So you don't want steam mushrooms. Okay, we're gonna leave these here and move on to the blender time. And the blender. No, this is for my fans. Yes, everybody jump up and join us or do your chair blender dance. We got this. Back to you. Take it away. Okay, we're just going to blend this up until it's smooth. It doesn't take a while because the, the beans are soft. So here we go. There we go. And I'll bet if Carrington was there, she would have loved to see you dance like that. She would have joined you. <laughs> she would. She's at um, she's in pre PK three right now. So she's at school. But she loves this. We eat this almost every day. Um, yeah, she gobbles it up. So this is what it looks like. It's just it's a little bit liquid, and that's what we want. So you can use it right now from here. Or you can store it in a jar in the fridge for like up to a week. So it's great. It's double this batch if you want more for the rest of the week. And then you can have this egg all week long. This is amazing, Susan. I absolutely love this original recipe. You could make a quiche with this, yes? Yes. You can make quiche, omelet, frittata. 
just wow. scramble it up. Um, I've had a a viewer put it into a waffle iron and she made like a waffle egg and then made a sandwich with it. It was really, really neat. It was very creative. So she sent some photos of so excited about this. And we will have this recipe with the thousands of others available on janeunchained.com, including Susan's past uh, shows that she's done. It's been so amazing. Thank you so much. Again, we are Lunch Break Live. Back to you. So I'm going to show you my mushrooms. I don't know if you can see this page, but see, they're getting a lot of moisture on top. And this is why I don't want to flip them because I want this moisture to evaporate. And then the mushroom gets dry, and that's when that real crispy golden uh, bottom happens, and then it gets that like nutty taste. It really is the best way to touch to do the mushroom. So I'm still not touching it; it's still here. You it's are giving minute. us you're giving us the secret to that umami flavor that you know people really want to capture, and I love this. Stay tuned. Take it away. So I'm just waiting for these. I'm going to wait for these to cook. Um, because I want to put them inside my omelet. Um, so let's see. They're getting nice droplets of water on it. I could take a little peek and see if it's gotten where I want it to. But well, I don't think so. certainly while we wait, I would love to ask you because you work with a lot of um, people who are on the transition going into a plant based, you know, lifestyle. So, what would you say are your three, you know, tips for folks who are on the journey making their way over? What would you say, um, being someone who's been plant based for how many years now? Uh, four and a half. Four and a half. It just, it's, Flown by. We love it. Yeah, four and a half. Mm -hmm. And I know that you're foraging and you've got your own garden, plus you're a mom. So maybe why don't we take it into the mom sector? Tell us, what would you suggest for other moms who want to transition their children to a plant-based lifestyle? Take it away. That's a great question, Paige. And that's actually a question I get asked a lot. And I'll, I just share what works for me. And what works for me a, I started at a young age, so I had that benefit. Some moms are like, my kids already, you know, stuck in their ways. Um, not, and that's a problem for them because they just can't get them to change. So I say, you know, work with what they like. Um, you know, try to encourage them, you know, to eat broccoli. You can make like my yummy vegan cheese sauce and put that on there. That could help, you know, entice them more. Um, I blend things into pasta sauces and into smoothies. So I'll hide like my, my, my daughter doesn't really like spinach a lot. So I just blend it in to a pasta sauce and she gobbles it up. Um, and what else? I have fun with it. Like I show her a, that I'm eating it and I love it. So if you're not, if you're not eating the vegetables and the, and the food with the children, and then you're saying, no, here, eat this. They could be, they see that as a contradiction and, you know, like, why would he, I eat that if you're not? So I make it a, it, I love it anyways, too. So I'm like, yum, carrots. And like, I, I have a lot of fun eating healthy food and, um, you know, like growing it in the garden, teaching my daughter how it grows and just really falling in love with food and learning what it does. Like, I'll tell her like, oh, these carrots are going to help your eyes. And I make it fun. Like, you're going to see better tomorrow. And then tomorrow I'll be like, oh, did you see better? Because you ate carrots and things like that. So I just try to really make it fun and whimsical and not push it on, on her. You know, if she doesn't like it, she doesn't like it. That's fine. Kids have different palates. But then I'll hide it in something and won't tell her. <laughs> That's my turn. Okay. So I think our mushrooms are ready. All right. Okay. Just on that note. Oh, my gosh. They're perfect. So look at this brown, golden brown you get. I don't know if you can see that. It's definitely yum. I can smell it from here. Yum. <laughs> it's so good. And that's what you want. It's really going to just add that flavor, that extra boost of flavor. So then I can, this is when I would salt it. And that'll get a little bit more of the water. Oh, yeah. Look at this. This one's like beautiful. Oh, cool. And now I have, um, here I have a mix of, 
all different types of mushrooms. I've got cremini, I've got um, lobster, I think I've got some trumpet here, but you could use whatever you have for this recipe. Buttons work fine, or you can omit them if you don't like mushrooms. Or you could add things like spinach, whatever you want in an omelet. I'm just showing you how to make an omelet with this egg mix. All right, those are perfect. A little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper. Okay, and now we're gonna move on to our omelet. So I'm just gonna switch the pans here so you guys can see. And where's my camera guy? I'm gonna fire him. Where'd he go? Where'd You're go? doing a great job. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. Okay, there's our pan. So again, the pan is hot. I have a nonstick pan, but you know what? I'm on Jane Unchained, and I do not want this to be my first like disastrous omelet. So I'm gonna put a little bit of oil in my pan because you know, on TV and all that, or on Facebook Live, on Jane Unchained. So. You do not have to put oil if your pan is not stick. Um, mine is, but I don't trust it. So in we go. So the amount of batter you're gonna add depends on your pan. Mine's quite small-ish. So I'm gonna guess it's about, I'm adding about maybe half a cup. Now I'm gonna make an American omelet here. This works for a French one as well. No problemo. And with a, with an American omelet, can you see? I don't think you can properly see, can you? That's just, there you go. There we go, that's great. Okay. So I'm just gonna roll it around until it starts to cook. And for those of you just joining us, we have been watching step-by-step -step homemade vegan egg mix made from scratch. We're talking mung beans. We're talking seasonings. Oh my gosh, blended up some nutritional yeast, which has a high concentration of B12, by the way, wonderful to slip into dishes uh, to get your vitamins and nutrients. And oh my goodness, look at this. It really does cook up like just like uh, you know, a chicken yeah. egg but without without that so wow look at this okay so you're going to move it out of the center to the sides is that what we're doing yeah so the uncooked part in the center i'm just gonna just move it around till it gets to some heat i can even put it in under but you know Paige, what i love about this is no salmonella risk right that's like, right. You can undercook this a little bit. It's not, it's fine. That's right. It's beans. And like yes. you said, it's so reasonably priced. The beans are just, you know, you can really get this on a budget, plant based on a budget, vegan on a budget. Now, I did want to ask you one more question, which is um, did you soak? Now, do you buy the beans? Uh, do you soak them overnight? Do you buy them in a can? How do you do it, Susan? Yeah. Um, great question. So I bought mine. Like this, I just actually bought them on Amazon. Um, I have a link to all of this on the on my site. Um, but yeah, I got this for like ten dollars or something, and I soak half a cup for this recipe in about two cups of water and soak them overnight, and you get one cup of beans. Incredible! Mm -hmm. Wow! And so you can buy in bulk. Uh, which is also helping the planet, you know, uh, less waste. Yeah. And, um, you know, so I have a question because on your, as you're cooking this, I know. So when you go out foraging in your area out there in uh, Vancouver, right? But uh, British Columbia, is that, do I have that correct? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. I'm in North Vancouver. Yes. yes. So where, where do you forage and what do you usually find out there? Oh, that's a great question. I'm just going to put um my toppings in and then i'll answer that great question so i've got the mushrooms in and then i'm going to use some cheese i really love this because it melts so creamy and it gives that luscious feeling to or taste and feeling mouthfeel to the omelet can you show us the brand? You said that's a plant-based cheese, yeah? It's called this, is plant, this is a plant-based cheese. It's made from Scotland. Um, it has no GMO. Um, it, it, yeah, so it's called, it's from Butte Island Vegan Creamery. 
And it's, I've looked into the brand. It's a brand that I can really stand behind. Um, so it's lactose free, dairy free, soy free. Yeah, it's great. And they have all different types. Um, they have some flops, they have cream cheese. Amazing. Now, when you talk about your own blog and your website, we're talking about Susan Cooks Vegan, right? Everybody can find <laughs> the socials on Susan Cooks Vegan, y'all, and get engaged and get involved with all the cool offerings that Susan has available. Okay, so back to you. Okay, so I'm going to answer your foraging question, but here I've got the omelet. It's all cooked. I've got my toppings here. And now I'm going to flip. Now this cheese is gonna melt so beautifully once it's on your plate and gets warm. It's gonna be so gooey. I maybe could have put it in a little bit earlier, but we were having such a good conversation, Paige. <laughs> okay. So oh, we're really sure. getting educated here, y'all. Here oh. on Live Live with Jeff Susan. It's so exciting. Susan Cooks Vegan. And uh, ooh, what are you topping that with? This is a bit of chives. Um, dill would look uh, would work nicely. Parsley. And here you go. Is your beautiful? Justin. Wow, it's gorgeous, Susan. My goodness, look at that. And we're talking about twenty minutes. That was under twenty minutes. Boom. Yes. And from that recipe, and I've got all this extra. Yeah. And so you'll jar that and put that in the fridge. Mm -hmm. And how long can you store it for? You can store it for, I've only tested it for up to a week because it gets eaten so fast. <laughs> so I can, I can confidently say it lasts at least a week. Um, if a little separation does occur in your jar, that's fine. Just give it a little shake. That might happen. No problem. Cause it's all natural. Um, Amazing. Wow. Okay. Will you show us the omelet one more time as we head out? Well, you know what? I'm going to eat it too. Because oh, it's hot. And then be sure to share with us as you're eating and enjoying, what do you forage for? Because, you know, yes. yeah. Forage for different things. I usually go around my house. Um, and there's also some, some local places around that you can go for. Um, I love like fiddleheads in the spring. I'm going to go out this year for mushrooms. I haven't done mushrooms yet, but it's a goal. Um, you know, I love different flowers. I love different, um, like lettuces that grow wild. Those are really good. Different, um, herbs. What else do I forage for? Oh, berries, tons of berries. I go out there like picking. My husband jokes, I have little hands like a raccoon. So they're really good for picking berries. <laughs> I'll be out there all the time. If we're, if we're driving past some place, I'm like, ah! So, so. <laughs> oh, I love it. Well, the more and more people are getting back into the earth and I just so appreciate all your environmental uh, in, you know, in, in mindful ways of eating and, and making this delicious meal. Thank you everybody for joining us on lunch break live. We'll let Susan take a bite. Tell us how it yes. turns out and you too can make this yourselves at home cooking at home with love with chef susan find her at susan cooks vegan all over in all the various social media aspects and thank you so much once again we love having you on lunch break live thank you i feel like i'm part of the family yes, at i'm so privileged Oh, my goodness. We are so honored. So we'll see you next time on Lunch Break Live, everybody. And we'll catch you on our website, janeunchained.com. Thanks.